I'm trying to figure out this Von Miller story. I mentioned this at the start of the show. The more I read, the less I know. All I know is it has to do a whole lot with Von Miller and a urine sample or two or three and one spilled and one diluted and what we found in one and not in the other and an appeal process that cost him even more games and could have cost him half the season from what I'm told. I just need a simple answer, and for that I bring in the simple man, simple mind of Mark Kisla, the great columnist for the Denver Post. Kiz, help me here. Uh, it's the evil ganja. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the decline and fall of Western civilization right there. It, the Cheech and Chong movies were the beginning of it, and Von Miller's the end of it. Wow. So that's all it is he tested positive for marijuana. That, that's the word that uh, in his rookie year, he tested positive for mar- marijuana, and he never he got in the program, and now that program is a rat maze that he can't get out of. And whether it's dropping the beaker of urine, that would be messy, or, or, or trying to dilute it or whatever, he was confident. He was just dead certain uh, three weeks ago that he wasn't going to be suspended four games, that it was going to be zero. And then he, he's not much. He ain't no Nate Silver, I'll tell you that. He doesn't predict the future very well. He got six instead of zero. But he thought he, the worst was four. Oh, boy. But it, it, is he getting six games because of how he's handled all of this, or is it because he just tested positive here? I'm trying to figure out if he tried to impede the process or try to circumvent the process here. I think he fought the law, and the law won. And sometimes, you you know, uh, I've been pulled over for speeding tickets, and this might be hard to believe, but sometimes I've given the, the, the sheriff, the deputy, a little smart aleck answers. And that doesn't usually work very well. I think, I think he thumbed his nose a little bit at it, mm-hmm. and that's not really a good thing to do if you're in this program. And now he wants to say it's my fault. It's the media's fault. And I'll take that, but, but I didn't assign him the six-game suspension. Roger Goodell and the boys in the NFL office did that. Wait a minute. How can you blame the media? He says the media's been putting crazy stuff out there about him. And that, you know, his, the true Bronco fans really know that he's still the fun, love, and bond. And he lays it out on the line on the field. And he's a great teammate. Whoa, 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 whoa. I like Von Miller. And he, he is fun, loving. And he says, dig him, because he's a Texas A&M guy. At, at the end of every interview, it's dig him. And, and, and he sacks quarterbacks like nobody's business. He's awesome. But if you get suspended for six games, you ain't a great teammate by definition. If you are on the field, you can't help your team win. Mark Kisler, the Denver Post columnist, never short on opinions, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. Where, where did the, I mean, this hasn't been a good offseason for the Broncos when it comes to the front <laughs> office. I mean, they did get Wes Welker, which is nice, but... I mean, you got guys getting popped for DUIs in the front office, the whole Von Miller situation. The expectations are extremely high on this team. Are the Broncos still the team to beat, in your opinion, to win the Super well, Bowl? Well, if you're going abs- to have an all-night raise, you know, <laughs> if you're going to have a woodsy and some kegs, I think that's the team to, to call. Right now, they look like team party rather than Team Super Bowl. But I do actually like they've changed the narrative. They were supposed to roll to the Super Bowl, and now John Fox, the coach, can walk in there and say, hey, everybody thinks against us, and we have to pull together because Vaughn won't be here. It's not quite quite the, the easy street to the Super Bowl that it once was, and in the long term, I think that can work out good for the Broncos. Well, when you said we're going to roll to the Super Bowl, I thought you meant something else. So uh, <laughs> We're, we're going to get to the Super Bowl, and we're going to roll – at the Super Bowl, and then you're going to roll them up, and they're going to celebrate. All right, uh, Peyton Manning's window here of opportunity. Um, you know, we weren't sure where it was with the Colts, but now with the Broncos, you know, do we have three years, four years, five years? I think Peyton assumes this way. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, I know Peyton looks at it this way. He doesn't count on three years. He doesn't count on anything beyond this year. He's 37 years old. He's an old dude. And, you know, you can't count on 38 as an NFL player. And I get what he's talking about. I'm 56, and I'm not counting on 57. So, you know, uh, should he be able to be good for three years? Yes, but there's no guarantee. It is Super Bowl bust in that regard. You have the uh, season opener where you're playing the Ravens. Uh, Elvis Dumerville comes back to town. I guess when you take Von Miller out of this defense, Champ Bailey at his age and an injury – is this an uh, you know a team's success is going to be completely predicated on how good the offense is, or is there a possibility that th- this defense is actually going to be legitimate enough 
when you when you face the big boys, you can face the AFC West. But when you face the big boys and push comes to shove, are they going to be able to be a balanced team? Here's what's interesting is that I don't think from the end of last season that John Elway ever believed that Elvis Dumerville was a good investment. He was ready to say goodbye. His head coach, John Fox, who's a defensive guy, pushed, let's keep Elvis. Let's keep Elvis. He, he gives us a good push on the pass rush. Well, it didn't work out. And then John Fox just said, well, yeah, at least I got Mom Miller on the other side. Now John Fox doesn't have his two best pass rushers. I guarantee you this. When he's at, at home at night drinking his Dr. Pepper or whatever, he ain't feeling too confident about this defense right now. Keep stirring it up. Good to visit with you, Mark. Thank you. My pleasure, sir. All right, Mark Kisla, Denver Post. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.